Daniel Brega is a social entrepreneur with a legal and sports marketing background. As a founder of several foundations for underprivileged young people, Evelyn is a strong advocate for social equality, striving to build, further develop, sustain, and protect an inclusive society where no one is left behind. She is a board member of the Black Impact Foundation, who works to create a cohesive Black community where Black people across the globe are empowered to take control and improve the quality of their lives, assert their value, and be protected from exploitation while building their capacity for social economic independence and social responsibility. Thank you so much, Ivolan Denubreka, for joining us here on Aware Now to share your story, to share this space, to share this time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, very honored to be invited by you. Thank you. Absolutely. When it comes to equality, uh, there is the word racism, and it's something that everyone experiences in a different way at different times in their life. And not only do we as adults experience it, but our children do as well. And sometimes they don't see it, but we do. Can you share for a moment a specific time, Evelyn, when your child experiences? Uh, yes, uh, I can. Well, first of all, I firmly believe that in principle, children, they do not see color uh, or differences in other children. I believe that we adults, we instill uh, racial biases into their minds. And um, so we as parents must be very aware of of, of uh, what we say and how we act around children. To come back to your question, yes, as a parent, I've encountered numerous of uh, uh, instances where my uh, black-skinned son faced differential treatment compared to my white-skinned uh, son. He has uh, frequent uh, been stopped by law enforcement without no reasons. <laughs> and um, also offered uh, fewer opportunities at school. So yes, uh, I, I'm very aware of, uh, as a parent, what it is for your child to have uh, racial encounters, let me put it that way. Yeah. The first time uh, my, black, my son, my black son, my oldest one, uh, became aware of what it meant to be different from his white peers. I think he was around eight years old. In the Netherlands, we have this Santa Claus, but we call it Santa Claus. And I believe we're the only country in the whole world who celebrates that. That's a kind of Santa Claus, but the helpers are not elves. They're um, Black Pete's. So, and Black Pete's, they're just white people who paint their faces black, and they're the helpers from Santa Claus. Now, uh, on, on the day, on December 5th, we celebrate uh, Santa Claus, and uh, my son was around eight years old, and tradition is that Santa Claus comes to the school and he brings gifts for the kids. And all the kids, they're allowed to paint their faces black. So, all of them did, except my son. And the teacher told him, no, you're already black, so you don't need to paint your face mm. black. Well, this single remark had a profound impact on my child. It uh, not only made him actually aware of his skin color, but it also drew attention to his own peer group because, uh, you know, that he has a different uh, skin tone. Well, from that day forward, he became a target uh, of ra racist bullying because that remark that the teacher made, you know, um, create a kind of awareness for his former friends that he was different. So he, they were allowed to tease him or they were allowed to pick on him because he was different. So that was my, my really my first encounter mm -hmm. uh, or 
his first encounter with with um, being black. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, he grew older. And then I saw that he was not giving the same opportunities at school. And I couldn't understand that because he was quite smart. <clears throat> But still, his 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 grades were were lower than his white peers. And strange thing was that a lot of his friends, his colored friends, because in my household we have everybody white friends, black friends, etc. But especially his black friends, they all seem to experience the same thing. In that same period, we had a big number of dropouts in schools especially from from children with of, of color. That was the first time that I realized that um, they were not being given equal chances. And that was hard to see because um, what happened was uh, this unjust treatment led to demotivation, a decline in their self-esteem and they also had a bleak outlook on their future because they were not being seen at school. They were not given the same chances. They were not being heard, you know. So in response, I decided that I have to do something back. So I created my own foundation, which is called Streetpo. And it stands for street professionals because I believe that the streets have so many talents. And our mission was um, to empower and motivate young individuals who, has, uh, who have been disengaged from the traditional school systems. And what we did was actually very simple. We assist them in taking control of their lives, make them aware of their unique talents, uh, unlock their potential and guide them towards an educational path that would resonate with their unique needs and enable them to obtain their diplomas and have a future perspective. What we do is critical. It, it's, it's very important, the work we do. So uh, hopefully we can continue that for a very long time still. Yes, yes absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, as parents, when we address inequality, when we're faced with matters of, of racism with our children, they learn something and we do too. Will you share the story of a lesson that you shared with your son and the lesson that you learned as a mother? Um. I can only see, say that my biggest mistake was my biggest lesson in life. Um, because as a parent, you know, our desire is to ensure our child's uh, happiness and support them in building a successful life. And, you know, we, we're naturally, we try to protect them from, from life's disappointments and, and, and negative experience. And in doing so, I told my son when he was around 16, 17 years old, I told him that he needed to work harder and put in considerable more effort in uh, excelling beyond his white peers because society would judge him based on his, this color the color of his skin well it took some years but i finally realized that i have repeated the same mistake that the teacher did when he was eight and i was his parent so that was more of a betrayal than his teacher uh, i had unintentionally conveyed the message that he was somehow inferior to his white peers. And I had allowed my own biases to cloud my perspective. And rather than recognizing and cele celebrating his unique talents and qualities, I, I, I was looking through a biased lens. 
this had a, 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 a very bad impact on his self-image uh, and his self-confidence because I was his parent and I told him this. I, th I was not an outsider. Instead of doing that, I, 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 now I know, you know, I should have consistently encouraged him and made it clear to him, you know, that he should never feel inferior to anyone else that he should be proud of who he is and, and, and of his origins. And that he had to have a rock, a rock solid belief, yes, in himself that he can achieve anything. So, yeah, I, 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 I can only see say that um, I'm grateful that this significant mistake has become my most profound lesson because it's a lesson that now I apply when I'm mentoring and I'm also passing it on to my youngest son and to my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, and and to myself as well, you know, stop. Yeah. We just the first perception we have from people is of their exper uh, of their appearances. And then we start doing the checklist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's wrong and that's wrong we shouldn't do that so yes um that was very bad that was my mistake and my lesson and isn't that interesting the mistakes that become the most profound lessons um thank you for sharing that because we say oh i don't have any biases i don't until we realize no. that we absolutely do you know it, it, it's a human thing i believe that you know we have been programmed as since we were young to think a certain way to do certain things and we inherit that from generations as you get older you know you, you start to see things in different perspectives uh, and it takes courage you know to to walk away from uh, what's normal or what's accepted i mean i was brought up in a small village and you know i'm too white to be black and too black to be white so i couldn't they couldn't put me anywhere then i came to amsterdam which is a big city and you have so many different cultures here so you know it's a completely different place uh, people tolerate more uh, because they they have more uh, they're more diverse yeah. than a small town. Your environment is very important as well on your view on life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so let's talk about you and your career. You began your career working hard to climb the corporate ladder to advance. Uh, but now you climb a different ladder. One that yeah. seeks social and economic improvement of disadvantaged youngsters and supports the advancement of the Black community. So, yeah. here enters Black Impact Foundation. Please share the mission and the vision that you serve here. Yeah. It takes time to get to know yourself. When you are younger, you know, the peer pressure is, is, is so heavily. So, um, you know, I, I grew up in a very wide environment. And then, you know, I had my kids. And one kid is darker than the other one. And then I saw the, the, the different treatments of both things. And I'm like, how is that possible? Because you cannot me as a mother i love them both the same and i don't see the difference between them and and others are doing that and i saw that our community was very uh, it was not united um the black community so uh former uh international great football player clarence sador i uh, i was working with him on some other projects and he decided to start the Black Impact Foundation. And we had only one mission. And our mission was, you know, to unite a globe, the global black community. An inclusive global society can only be reached, you know, 
if everybody has equal opportunities. If people stop looking uh, at each other as different because of skin color or backgrounds or whatever, but just look at each other as human beings. So it's very important to create a global black community and to use our own resources to unlock the untapped potential within our communities. I believe that only then we can create a lasting impact on a global scale. Clarence, uh, when he asked me to join the board, I, I gladly accepted it. Because we must start to believe and trust in our own collective power. You see what happens, uh, Ellie? Uh, other groups, right, they have a global community and they strengthen each other from within their own community. But black people historically don't have that. This, this stems from our slavery past and the mistrust, the mistrust that was implanted in us during that time. I believe that it's time for us to unite and support each other and use our talents to create our own norms and structures and ensure that, that generations after us can successfully thrive in an equal and inclusive world. Mm -hmm. That's my strong belief and that's where the Black Impact Foundation stands for. Well, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I can very much feel you when I hear you say not white enough, not black enough, and that in between that we sometimes find ourselves in and um, being able to brace the totality of who we are to really truly find that place of inclusion where we can um, all come together as a community. Very important, very important, because even though the word uh, uh, black is into the, in the Black Impact Foundation, we are very inclusive. What we want to do, you know, is to create that global society where everybody is accepted. You know, so the, the thing of it is, is that People of color have faced adversity in every timeline and in every nation. So with inequality, with, with racism being a global issue, that re it requires a global response, to your point. So here comes November 30th in Dubai of this year. This will be addressed. For those unaware, what can people expect to see in here at the 2023 Global Black Impact Summit. Yes. Well, first of all, the Global Black Impact Summit, GBIS, it's not about racism. Mm -hmm. The Black Impact Foundation is not about racism either. It's about creating equal opportunities for everybody. And the, the, the Black Impact Summit serves as a platform to illuminate the achievements uh, and highlights the talents and creativity and the brilliance that we exist within uh, the black community. We believe that by empowering individuals and fostering innovations and cultivating strong leadership, we can really unlock the, the, the potential within our community and create an effective positive change that will last uh, forever and have a global impact. The thing is, uh, Ellie, we continue to operate in a framework which is largely influenced by white perspective. And for many in the black community, the pursuit of, 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 of acceptance remains a significant aspiration. We say, you know, we don't need to seek that acceptance because we already have it in ourselves, you know. We have so many resources, our own resources. We don't need to wait uh, for others uh, to give us a chance. Within our community, we can give ourselves chances because on every field, in every domain worldwide, we have black excellence. We have excellent doctors, lawyers, financial entrepreneurs, billionaires, everything we have. 
they are already role models for the young generations. The only thing is that we need to activate everybody to come together and use our own resources to create an equal world. You know, so let's let's end this conversation with where we need to begin. With awareness alone, we will never be able to create, preserve, sustain equality. It is only with action that we can begin to see the change that we want to see and the change that we need. So for those who want to create equality, true, sustainable equality, but have no idea how, what advice do you have? I know it's a big question, <laughs> but where do we start? Well, I, I believe for everybody is different. So I, I, I don't speak for everybody, but I, I can only speak for myself. Um, the first stop is that we must recognize that we are victors and not victims. That's, I believe, that's the most important thing that we can do. Identifying us as victims, I, I, I really believe that we are hindering the progress that we seek. And history has taught us, uh, you know, the remarkable strength and resilience of black individuals. I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for their strength. They have defeated the, the odds and, and dismantled barriers across diverse domains and overcome adversity. You know, it's imperative that we cultivate a fresh perspective centered on, on our inherent strength and untapped potential. We can do that. I'm, I'm, def I'm sure that we can do that. I mean, I've seen amazing young black talents and, and it's and, and what I also see is their voice is getting louder. So that was the first thing we should do, see ourselves as, 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 as victors. And another thing I believe is very important as well, is acknowledging that we black individuals, we are the narrative, the narrative already. We don't need to create a new one. It's time that we have faith in our own abilities and, and cease waiting for an invitation to join yeah, the predominantly uh, white tables. Trust in our own strength, in our capacities, in our talents, in our potential. You know, traditionally, we humans, you know, we categorize everything. Uh -huh. Let's do that. We categorize ourselves by nationality, skin color, sexual orientation, and various other factors. You know, we do that. Those kind of categorizations, you know, is not really a problem. You know, the issues arise when these categories become associated with prejudice and negative stereotypes. <laughs> Uh, and that is laying the foundation for racism and discrimination. It's essential to recognize that the way we look, our skin color, you know, or our or preference or whatever, it does not define our identity. It does not. You know, we are far more than just black, white, yellow, gay, fat or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when we interact with another, our primary perspective should be to see the shared humanity with each other. And that's lacking, unfortunately, uh, still in, in our, our, our society. Mm -hmm. And, and regardless of our skin color or our origin or whatever, we're all part of the human race. I know this has been said before, but it is true. Mm -hmm. And it's counterproductive to place people in, in, in often biased boxes solely based on, on how they look like or what they do or their preferences. <laughs> Instead, we should strive to celebrate the rich diversity that makes our world vibrant and unique.
while remembering our common bond as members of the human family. You know, that's that's something that I really think that we should focus on. And I, that's why I, I, I like the song from Michael Jackson, you know, you have to start with a man in the mirror. Well, and it's, it's such a great point that you make too. It's not, it, the issue is not that we do what we do in terms of categorizing. It's the association to it's those the categories. It's the right. association, you know. I mean, you have beautiful brown eyes. You have, you know, but those brown eyes, they don't define who you are. Right. You know, there needs to be an awakening, a collective awakening. Um, in society, we all have to play our part. Uh, and it doesn't matter how big or small it is, we all have a part in 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 our lives. That's why we're here on Earth. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, for the part that you play and play beautifully, thank you so much. Thank you You're for welcome. sharing your story, for sharing your experiences, your mistakes, your learnings. Thank you for helping all of us become a bit more aware now. Thank you. Well, I hope so. Thank you, Ellie, for having me. <laughs>